Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Need to vent. Sitting here at work just pissed off. I haven't seen much of my son this year. Didn't get him for the summer because of this dang virus. I'm pissed about that. Found out at the end of September that wife of five years is cheating on me. Has spent most of my time doing the FBI thing, which has been a giant can of worms with no apparent bottom. Have had this nasty woman in my house and I have to sit there and pretend that nothing is wrong when I just want to throw everything at her and kick her out. My lawyer just keeps telling me, not yet. I haven't slept in my bed in almost two months. Gonna burn that when she's gone. Have had no sex, which has caused her to accuse me of cheating. If she tries to hug me or kiss me, I have to sit there and take it when it makes me want to vomit. When I look at her, I see bugs crawling all over her. I want her gone, but it's just not yet. Not yet, not yet. There's not much left to burn on my fuse. It's like being locked in a big room with someone and there's just a table there and the room echoes and they start tapping on the table and tapping and tapping until you want to just flip the table and strangle them. I can't even talk to anybody about it right now because not yet, not yet, not yet. I'm angry at myself and disappointed in myself for putting myself in the position to let someone do this to me again. I just want this to be over. And I miss my son. Update. An update. I'll also provide some background as my wife's browsing history, yes, I am spying, shows she hasn't used Reddit in six months. Honestly, at this point, I don't even care. I'm white knuckling it right now. Anyone who has found out and said nothing until they served their cheating piece of crap, you have my admiration. This is freaking hard. I got home late Sunday. It's a 1400 mile drive. This was good. I really didn't want to see or talk to her. I was tired. Went to my chair and slept. I haven't slept well in two months. I've lost 15 pounds. I look and feel like crap, but it was the first eight hours I had gotten in a while. Monday, my wife tried to initiate some intimacy. I just cannot get it up for this woman. My Johnson is up bright and early before me every morning. So this is nothing physical with me. It's just that for once, my dick is in total agreement with my mind and heart. This upset her and we got into a pretty heated argument. I told her maybe it was something wrong with me. I'm 50 years old. This crap happens. She started insinuating again that I'm cheating on her. She said that I'm not being a good husband. I haven't screwed her in over two months. I haven't told her I loved her in over two months. Clearly, I'm doing something behind her back. I mean, she tried to gaslight the crap out of me. Yeah, I was doing something behind her back. I was piecing everything together. D-Day for me was September 25th. I work in collision repair. Specifically, I work on the vehicles that are considered train wrecks. September 25th, I wound up cutting my leg open on a truck I was working on. That was a trip to the emergency room. I got five stitches inside my leg and 34 stitches on the outside. It was pretty bad. I got put on some hefty painkillers and there was no way I was going to drive. So I called my wife. No answer. Called five minutes later. No answer. Called again. No answer. Texted her. Babe, pick up. I need you. Call me. Called her again. No answer. More texts. Nothing. About an hour and a half of this. So I got an Uber to take me home. We turn onto my street, come in view of my house, and she is standing in our doorway, completely sucking face with the GM of where she works. I told the driver to stop. This wasn't a peck, folks. They were swapping spit. She was supposed to be at work. I pulled out my phone, took a couple pictures, and told the driver to keep driving. I had him take me back to work. I sat there in the break room for four hours, head down on the table, numb, freaking heartbroken. When the painkillers wore off, I drove home, in pain from my leg and from everything going through my head. She wasn't home when I got there. She came home a couple hours later. She acted all concerned. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, I don't know. I asked her how her day was, and she made up some BS about work that day. I know it was BS. A week later, I learned for the first time that she hasn't worked a Friday in three years. I've never really used Reddit much. It was always there, but I had no real interest in it till then. I was looking for crap on dealing with cheaters, and this sub showed up along with YouTube videos. So I read stuff here, just trying to find out what the hell I should be doing right now. I was reading about all the red flags and just saying, yep, yep. Well, that fits her to a T. Always on the phone, always texting. 
For some freaking reason, can't answer my calls or texts. She had no idea until last Monday that I had sat in the emergency room trying to call her, texting her. In two whole freaking months, she had not looked at our chat log at all. She was yelling at me that I need to be a better husband, that I'm not doing enough for her. I got so freaking pissed. I grabbed my phone, opened the chat log, and shoved it in her face. Showed her those unanswered texts. I rarely raised my voice, but I yelled at her that the one time I needed her to be there for me, I got ghosted. She pulled out her phone and looked. Then she left the house for a couple of hours. When she came back, she apologized and then lied right to my freaking face. Oh, she had a hard day at work that day. Didn't notice because she was so busy. The truth is, she didn't know about the calls and texts because she was too busy screwing her boss in my house to answer the phone. In the time between that day and now, I've snooped her phone, her laptop, her iPad, learned I could look at all her crap from one of her old phones. I've installed cameras in the house. I have been watching her cheat on me in real time for two months. Let me tell you something. I've always thought Apple products are for idiots. They really are. Cheaters should probably start using Android or something because Apple syncs across everything. I've learned that she doesn't just dislike my son. She freaking hates that kid. Probably because him being at my house in the summer was cramping her style. I've learned this affair has been going on for years. I've learned it's not just her boss. One of the men she has been screwing has been someone I have worked with and considered a friend for over 14 years. She works with his wife. His wife has been helping her hide the affair with her boss. They freaking introduced me to her. They watched me propose to her. They were at the wedding. They let me marry this woman knowing she was cheating on me. I know of four men. Two I know, two I don't know. They've screwed in my bed, on my couch, on my kitchen table where I eat, in my shower. These a-holes have used my gosh darn soap to wash their freaking balls. I went up to my property where I hunt deer to get away for one weekend. I invited her. I always ask her to come whenever I go anywhere. She always declines. When I got back, I just watched this parade of men go through my house and screw my wife. She didn't even shower and clean herself off between two of them. What a freaking pig. Yeah, there's a camera in the bathroom too. Same thing when I went to Chicago for Thanksgiving. She spent the whole weekend screwing other men in my home, in my bed. For two months, I have kept this to myself until I told my ex-girlfriend what is going on. I'm wearing this calm mask, but I am inches from Hulk smash mode. I almost confronted her about her cheating, but I just ate the lies she told me. I freaking apologized for the argument. I told her I would make an appointment with a doctor for my erectile dysfunction. And then I read her text to her boss calling me a limp dick and she can't wait for Friday. This is not the woman I fell in love with seven years ago. I'd like to say she's pure evil, but I'm thinking she's got severe mental health problems. Certainly she's a sociopath. Whatever, I did not sign up for this. It was very hard for me to ask her to marry me. Since my first divorce, I had a hard time believing that anything nice a woman said to me was what she really meant. I've chased off two fantastic women in my life because I was still screwed in the head for my first wife. More so what I went through after the divorce than, oh, she didn't really love me. I got raped in my first divorce. I walked away from it with $43 in my pocket. No home, no car, no means to my job, no support from my family, and had to couch surf for the next three years because everything I made went to alimony and paying off our debt. 22 years old and my life screwed before it really even started. I spent my 24th birthday on my friend's couch, drunk, with a gun in my mouth, bawling like a baby because I didn't have the stones to do it. I saw no light at the end of the tunnel. Well, since that day, I have kept $43 in my wallet to remind me of the lowest I have ever been. I'm not saying that's where I am now, but I feel like I did after that. Yeah, I'm wiser and covered my butt this time, but you know, the first time, I caught them in the act. Had to do it the old-fashioned way. Come home early from a trip, but it was over. The extent of the gaslighting was her saying it's not what it seems and then screaming at me to stop as I beat the crap out of my brother and his friend. Don't do this. This hurt me in the divorce big time. But it was over. There was no BS. Nothing could be denied. All the therapy I've gone through, it's all gone. This time around, it's the slow process of deceit. Holding everything in, just getting lied to all the time. Even when she doesn't need a lie, she lies. I feel that every time I blink, she screws some other guy. I no longer love this woman. Let's be clear, there will be no working this out. I've checked out. My anniversary is a day that will live in infamy, Pearl Harbor Day. I'm going to make sure she remembers it. 
but the seconds seem like hours. I'm worn out. I have a constant headache. All the therapy I've gone through, it's all gone. Update. It's done. Served her yesterday. I had her served yesterday. For those asking, I wasn't in a good state of mind to write about it yesterday. Still not really, but I will get it off my chest. I woke up and left the house. Got myself some breakfast while waiting for her to leave for work. Rented a truck, went back home and changed the locks. My friend and her husband came over. He brought a friend and we packed up her things. We loaded up our bedroom furniture that I got her as a wedding gift. My couch, my dining table, just all the furniture she defiled. Took it to storage. Put all her clothes in garbage bags. Was going to throw her dirty clothes in with the clean, but my friend wouldn't let me. We got done after 11 a.m. At around lunchtime, I bought flowers and chocolates and went to her work. I went in, gave her the flowers and candy, gave her a big hug and a kiss. She was all smiles and blushes. Her co-workers were doing the, aw, that's so sweet thing. I told her that I would love to take her to lunch, but I had to go get a checkup on my leg, but did not make plans for the night because I wanted to give her a night she would remember. I gave her a goodbye kiss and started walking out. At this point, I'm going to start calling her GM, screwing Tom or FT. As I was leaving, I saw her boss and gave him a big smile and said, Hey, screwing Tom, how are you? Gave him a wave and left. Then I went and got some lunch. At 2 p.m., a deputy would be walking into my wife's work to serve her. At 2 p.m., I was standing in front of FT's house. I texted him the picture I took on the day I caught them. I took a selfie in front of his house and sent that too. I knocked on the door and Mrs. FT answered. She knows me a little bit from parties and thinks my wife works hard. I told her that my wife and her husband were having an affair. She didn't believe me. I showed her that first picture I took and showed her a selfie they took while my wife was giving him a blowjob on my couch. And she freaking slapped me. I just stood there and she started crying. I gave her a thumb drive with everything pertaining to my wife and her husband that I had. I told her my wife was cheating on me with multiple men. Get checked for STDs. I gave her my lawyer's card and my number. Then she asked me why I was doing this to her. And to be honest, why did I do that? I hurt her pretty bad. I feel like the biggest piece of crap for doing that. I told her she had a right to know and felt like an a-hole for giving her that answer. As I was leaving, that's when my phone started blowing up. Didn't answer any calls or texts. I just went home. When I got home, I changed my Facebook status to divorced. I started reading the texts from my wife. What the F is this? What are you doing? All that crap. I messaged her back and told her she could come to the house at 7 p.m. and not one minute before to get her clothes. Apparently, FT didn't tell her what I did right away as I imagine he had his own problems at the moment. But my wife sent me a text a little later, mother effering me up and down for telling Mrs. FT. So he did tell her. My friend that covered up for my wife couldn't call her Amber. Started calling me. So I answered. I answered with, How long have you known that my wife and FT were having an affair? Please don't lie to me. And she told me what I suspected. The whole time. Since before my wife and I had met. The whole freaking time. All this time, I was the side piece. My whole marriage is a sick freaking joke. Let me tell you, that's a bitter pill to swallow. I asked her why she didn't tell me. She said it's because they thought I would go ape crap. Get violent and such. I told her that she knew me better than that. She said she kept it secret because she was her friend. What about me? I wasn't? I asked her if I knew her husband was cheating, wouldn't she want me to tell her? As a friend, wouldn't I be obligated to let her know something she should know? She said yes. So I hung up and sent her pictures my wife had taken of her and her husband and texted her back with my lawyer's number and said that my lawyer has everything I know. Then I told her to never contact me again. At about 4 p.m., my wife showed up at the house and found out about the locks. She started banging on the door and yelling. I didn't answer. She tried calling again. I turned my ringer off. Then she broke a window and left. At close to 7 p.m., two deputies parked out front. One is one of the people that helped me move stuff earlier. His wife showed up, also my friend. 7 p.m. rolls around and my wife showed up. She looked pretty subdued. Pretty sure her and Amber had gotten into it by then. I gave her her clothes, the storage key, and address. My lawyer's card. Told her that all contact with me will be through her. My wife started with the I love you crap. We can work this out. She's sorry. She loves me. A mistake. She doesn't love them. It didn't mean anything. I just pointed at my lawyer's card. She said that it's her house too and I can't kick her out. I told her it's my home and that she literally screwed herself out of it. This 
is when she got really loud. All the I love you's turned into F you's and I hate you's. The deputies turned on their lights and neighbors had to come out to gawk at the train wreck. I remained fairly calm and had my hands at my side through this. She kept screaming at me. I think she might have been drinking. She started crying that she had nowhere to go. And when I told her that I don't care, well, I learned something new about my wife. She can throw a right hook. She gave me a fat lip and a bloody nose. I didn't move. I just stood there and let her do it. She tried scratching my face. The deputies restrained her. I declined pressing charges, told them to just make her leave. They filed an incident report so I could get a temporary restraining order. Actually, I'm glad she did that. When she left, I went back in and while I was cleaning myself up, all that crap I should have been feeling for the last two months started to hit me. I'm pretty exhausted right now. I thought I would feel better after this all got out. I don't. I feel freaking awful. I'm not someone prone to crying, but I've been doing a lot of that since last night. There's almost 600 unanswered texts and calls on my phone and growing. I'm going no contact with our mutual friends. I don't want any of them trying to mediate things. I'll sort them out some other time. I didn't call my son last night. I've always called him every night. I'll tell him tonight. He'll probably not be upset by the news. He wasn't fond of her. Update. Hello. I met with her and her lawyer today. I didn't get everything I wanted, but I got enough. We signed for an uncontested divorce. It will be official in about two months. That's the good news. I feel some relief from this, but really, really sad about the whole thing. First off, she did not or could not look at me through almost the entire proceeding. I'm not going to pretend to know what was going through her mind, but I would like to think she didn't have the balls to look me in the eye. She got a decent lawyer. At least he knew he got handed a dog's dinner. They asked if reconciliation was possible, and we did dangle it even though it is not possible. We asked for full disclosure of what she did. He had already had her write it out. What she wrote down, however, was less than what I already know. I read what she wrote down, and conveniently, the two fellas I didn't know the identity of were not included in it. My lawyer produced stills from the camera footage. Who's this? And who's this? Well, she wasn't very forthcoming with him either. They asked us to step out. We did. I didn't catch every word, but he didn't sound too pleased. When we came back in, I got a more truthful version. The two guys were online hookups and very recent. She'd been having an affair with FT for more or less the whole time I've known her. She said she broke it off with him sometime after I proposed and until about a year into our marriage. I think I believe her on that. I mean, I shouldn't believe anything she says, but I did ask if she was ever faithful during our marriage. She started banging FP, my coworker, Amber's husband, on July 4th of 2019. We had a fourth barbecue and she gave him a blowjob then at my house while I was there. Said she didn't love him. She just got off on it. During this year, she just got bolder and started hooking up with random guys from online sites. I'm pretty sure she had some parking lot hookups and such, but I didn't press on that. I asked the attorneys to give us the room for a bit because I wanted to ask some private stuff. They walked out. I asked her why. Not why she cheated, why she married me. Why didn't she say no? She said she loved me. <laughs> Great way of showing it. She wanted to be married. She wanted the security. I was good in bed, but she's loved FT for 10 years. He wasn't leaving his wife and her clock was ticking. So I was a meal ticket, basically. She said I made her happy, but she wanted what she wanted. For those asking, they have both been fired. Amber raised hell at work. I didn't need to make a stink about anything. Soon to be ex-wife is living with her parents. I don't know what FT and Mrs. FT are doing. I was told it is none of my business. I think he is trying to stay married. If he stays married, I may have to give him a beating. I asked if there was anything else I ought to know. She told me she got an abortion two years ago because she didn't know who the father was. Wow, that was a low blow. In the beginning, we tried to have a kid, but we opted for the quit trying and enjoy the sex approach. I would have loved to have another kid, like a daughter I could spoil rotten. I had unprotected sex with my wife dang near daily. There's a huge chance this kid was mine. I will never know. This was enough to make me get up and walk out. Y'all can talk about a bullet dodged. I'm just thinking she killed my child. If anyone here has ever done any boxing, there's a point where the blows just keep coming, but you don't feel them. I mean, they're doing damage, but it doesn't hurt like the first few punches. It's just too much and you get numb to them. This is where I'm at. 
She could tell me she started the Chicago fire and I would not be surprised. I called the lawyers back in, told mine to go to plan B. Plan B is I took my demand for alimony off the table. I want the divorce agreement uncontested and signed. This is the fastest way. I wanted to say condition two to reconcile was for her to unscrew all those other men. You know, something impossible. But there's no point to being clever here. Ain't gonna lie, the abortion has me rattled. I don't want a monthly reminder of this woman even in the form of a paycheck. So at 5.43 p.m., she signed. In around two months, it will be official. I keep my house, my retirement funds, all my property. No alimony for either of us. She gets $73,000 from our savings, is not to contact me ever, and we are done. I do not care what happens to her now. I don't want to know what she'll do. I don't care. For her own good and anyone she meets in the future, I hope she goes to a shrink. But I am done giving a crap about this woman. I, in no way, feel like a weight has been lifted off of me. I've eaten a crap sandwich, and this is all I can taste. I've had nothing to be happy about for three months, and I am not happy now. I don't see that in my future, like at all. That abortion has been on my mind since she said it. I think it's going to be in there for a long time. I don't know what I'm going to do in the immediate future or long term. Maybe when this is all finalized, I'll feel some kind of release. I don't know. Right now, I just want to be left alone. No more, oh man, so sorry to hear that, or any of that. Right now, I just want quiet. This whole time I've been thinking about everything I've ever done, I don't see anywhere I have done right, only where I've gone wrong. I know this is an awful mindset to have, but it's what I'm left with. All I can say is at least I got to keep my stuff this time, but I won't be doing this again. Moved a new girl into my home. Divorce not finalized yet. The empty house has been getting to me. I wound up moving a new girl in. She's the cutest little Latina I've ever seen. She's about eight inches at the shoulder, weighs five pounds and has an underbite. I'm torn between calling her Maggie or high fructose corn syrup, cause she's so sweet. Picked up a one year old Chihuahua from the pound. Just needed someone happy to see me when I get home. Found her. Update. Hi all. In one hour, it will be exactly one year since I served my ex her walking papers. I woke up in a good mood, went for a run, made my boy breakfast and went to work. Day was going well and no issues with me mentally. 10.30 a.m. rolls around and I get a call up to the office. There was a delivery of cookies for me from the ex. Same thing she'd do every year. Told the folks in the office they could have them. Our CSR asked who the cookies are from, so I told her. No one's touched them yet. I'm a little pissed that someone told her where I work now. Other than that, I'm still in a fairly decent mood. She's got other methods of prodding at me to let me know she's out there. Her old favorite is to be late on her car payments, so the finance company calls me. Guess this is one more. Update edit. Came home to a surprise party. Greeted with barbecue and beer. I love my friends. They thought I might need to cheer it up. But honestly, aside from the cookies, my day was pretty good. This was just a great end of the day. Our first reaction from the community comes from Northman. No one should touch the cookies. COVID 20 detected. Next thought from Rage Sadness All in One. What a P U T A. No one wants her cookies. Tercer78 chimes in. Is she violating your no contact order as part of the divorce? You can always have the lawyer send a sternly worded cease and desist letter. After a year filed with removing a ton of toxic elements from your life, it must start to feel a lot cleaner. To steal a quote, you climb through miles of muck and crap only to come out the other side a clean man. Any progress with your sister? The OP replies, the temporary restraining order expired 90 days after issued, so no, she's not violating anything. I did meet with my sister. It went well. Spent Black Friday meeting her and her family and introducing her to what I call family. I'm still digesting it all, and that would be a whole other post not really for this sub, but it was good. She gave me a letter my mother wrote to me before she died. I haven't read it yet. Not out of spite or anything. I'm just not ready. Maybe scared to. I don't know. Benzel McPrush has her last comment. Our CSR asked who the cookies are from, so I told her. No one's touched them yet. CDC needs to run it through decontamination procedures first. Look for traces of anthrax, plutonium, cesium, cordyceps, G-virus, devil worms. 